Welcome to the With You Rugby Podcast, designed to give you an in-depth look at the United States Rugby Foundation, including our grant programs and recipients, fundraisers, events, and much more. Now let's get started. Hello, everyone. I'm Brian Vizard, President of the United States Rugby Foundation, and I want to welcome you to another of our With You Rugby Podcasts. And as we get closer to our 2023 U.S. Rugby Hall of Fame induction ceremony, which is scheduled for Salt Lake City on Saturday, September 16th, we thought it'd be nice to get to know this year's Hall of Fame inductees and special award recipients just a little bit better. And today we get the privilege of welcoming in former UCLA Bruin, former Santa Monica Dolphin, former Cincinnati Wolfhound, former past U.S. Eagles 15s and 7s great, and the 2023 U.S. Rugby Hall of Fame Chairman's Award recipient, Dr. John Fowler. Welcome, John. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, thanks for having me. It's, it's good to be here. And John, where are you talking to us from today? I'm in Cleveland, Ohio. All right, fantastic. And John, as we do with all our guests, uh, we want to get to know them a little bit better. So tell us about your upbringing, where you grew up, and the, the sports you played as a kid. Well, I grew up in Hawthorne, California, near the uh, LA airport, and I played mostly baseball as a kid. And then in high school, I played football and did wrestling and uh, quit the shot, I guess you say, did shot put. And those were my childhood sports. And when did you get introduced to the sport of rugby and how? Well, it's kind of crazy. I'm not sure why it happened, but I think it was my last year of high school. My father took me up to UCLA to see a, a game, a rugby game from against Stanford against UCLA. I have no idea why he did that or <laughs> what he was thinking. I have no idea. But I watched Stanford play UCLA and I saw lots of running. And I thought, hmm, this is an interesting game. Anybody can run with the ball. Uh, I was a lineman in high school, so I never touched the football. Well, you played both football and rugby while attending UCLA. Who was your football coach at UCLA then? And did he not have any problem with his players playing rugby as well? You know, Dick Vermeil was the coach the first year I played. And I think uh, grandfathered in some of the, especially offensive linemen, had already played rugby before he got there. And I think he valued the mobility. It would help with mobility of the offensive linemen. And so he did not have a problem with uh, with guys playing rugby. Uh, coaches in the future, I think, might have had a little bit of a problem. Terry Donahue was the next coach. But um, it, it was a great, great experience there. Well, let's talk a little bit about football now. The Bruins won the 76 Rose Bowl. Who did you beat in that game? What do you remember about it? Uh, we beat Ohio State with Archie Griffin, uh, coached by Woody Hayes. And actually, Ohio State had beaten us earlier in the season pretty badly in the preseason, and they were the favorites. But actually, I really think Dick Vermeil outcoached Woody Hayes. And we had, we had a great team, um, and we won the game. So uh, that, was, that was a great experience. Did you have any, I got to ask, did you have any one-on-one -on -one confrontations with Archie Griffin that day? Were you able to stop I, him? I tackled him one time on a punt return. Okay. Yeah, that's, good. That was, that's all. Now, you also played flanker in second row for the Bruins. Uh, who was your coach with the, the Bruins at that time, and do you have any fond memories from UCLA rugby days? Well, when I, when I was a freshman at UCLA, I went out for the rugby team in order to get in shape for spring football. And I had seen lots of running in that Stanford game. I figured, you know, I'm going to have to run it to get in shape anyway. Right. I went out for the rugby team, and Dennis Storr was the coach. And there were a lot of great players on the team, a lot of grad students, actually, that had lots of experience uh, playing rugby. So I learned from very, very good players. And playing for Dennis Storr was, was a real treat. That was a real adventure. Now, after you graduated from UCLA, you joined the Santa Monica Dolphins Rugby Club. You were part of some pretty good sides there. Tell us a bit about your time with Santa Monica. And, and did Dennis coach you there as well? And who were some of your teammates there? Well, Ron Nesbitt was the coach at Santa Monica. Actually, one of the great things at UCLA was with those great players, we won the Monterey Tournament, I think, in 1975 or so. And then playing for Santa Monica, I was in medical school at that time, and we won the Monterey Tournament again. But it was great to play with Dave Briley, uh, Ron Gus, Janice Jablonski, 
all these great players, many of whom played on the first uh, USA team back right. in, uh, I guess, 74, maybe, something like that? 76. 76, okay. So I played with a lot of those great players on the Santa Monica team. And uh, you also had a few years playing with the Cincinnati Wolfhounds. Tell us about your time there. You know, playing for Cincinnati was, for me, it was kind of an off and on thing because I was in my emergency medicine residency at the time. So I wasn't able to be totally committed and attend every practice, every game. But we did play against some great teams, playing against uh, the Chicago Lions with Nick Federinko, playing against the uh, Seattle Valley with uh, Steve Finkel. So I played against some great players that I had played with later on for the USA team um, from the Midwest team. Yeah, well, that's a good transition. You, you were in seven caps for the Eagles 15 teams. What was a highlight or two from your Eagle 15s play? You know, I think just playing with great, outstanding athletes. I mean, outstanding, committed athletes from all over the country was a real treat. From the East Coast, uh, players like Gary Lambert and Tom Selfridge, and then the Midwest, and then the West Coast, of course, playing with a lot of the Grizzlies, whom I knew very well uh, from playing with them and against them over the years. But one of the one of the really interesting games was that game against South Africa that we played up in New York in New York State. We were supposed to play in Albany and ended up having to play out on a farm field, out on a pasture. That was kind of an adventure. Was there any particular moment of that game that stands out in your mind other than the intrigue, I guess? No, no. It was just it was just kind of a crazy game. Right. Yeah, I did enjoy playing. It wasn't a USA team. I guess it wasn't allowed to be a USA team, but playing for the Cougars in 1978 in South Africa was also very interesting. And I learned later on that the final game of that tour, we played against the country of Rhodesia, the Rhodesia national team. And I later learned that actually that's the last time that they played as Rhodesia. Hmm. All subsequent games were played as Zimbabwe. Hmm. Interesting, yeah. Now, you're also a member of the USA Eagles Sevens team for several years. You made five trips to the Hong Kong Sevens. What was your favorite memory from your time with the Sevens program? Well, of course, playing with you there. Come on. <laughs> that had to be. All right. right. <laughs> Actually, the Hong Kong Sevens was, was, was just an amazing experience. You know, getting to know some of the players from around the world on different teams, uh, different continents, was just an, just an amazing experience just overall i don't know if there was one particular incident or game but winning the silver plate in i think 1986 it was, was 86 was really a highlight that's the best that we had done so far and uh we had a great team and we performed well that was just an overall great experience every year there though well let's go back that was one of the only times you and i played i think you're on the tail end i was just coming up but uh before that, we were in San Francisco. Remember the earthquake we experienced in, in San Francisco that year? That's right. Yeah. yeah that, was, that was a real shattery right there. Uh, we've only talked about your football and rugby so far, but uh, maybe your greatest achievements came off the pitch. Your entire Eagles career was played while you were attending medical school. How demanding and how difficult was that to balance the two? Well, you know, some of my former teammates have reminded me over the years in these last few years, they said, you know, it seemed like you always had books with you. <laughs> I kind of, that's been a long time ago, so I'm not sure I remember everything that clearly, but they said you had books with you all the time in Hong Kong and here and there and everywhere. Um, but it was uh, challenging to fit rugby and training and playing games into studying medicine and training for emergency medicine. Yeah, that was challenging for sure. Were there any uh, test matches that you had, uh, I'm, I'm assuming there probably was, that you had to give up because of school? Well, in 1985, I was not able to really participate in much at all. It was my third year of residency training. And at that point in my training, I was one of the senior residents. And so I was unable to participate in any of the national or uh, west coast uh, training stuff or midwest uh, training stuff mm -hmm. so i couldn't play didn't go to hong kong etc okay 
Hey, John, in 1990, you and your wife, Diane, and the six kids moved to Turkey. What prompted that move? You know, I had had some, I had lived overseas as a high school student, as an exchange student in the Netherlands. And kind of that overseas experience kind of stuck with me. And I thought, you know, I, I enjoy teaching. And I thought maybe I could take my emergency medicine experience and uh, learning from the States to somewhere that did not have that. And there were a couple of medical schools in Turkey that were looking for foreigners to be part of their teaching staff. And we took an exploratory trip, a brief trip for a couple of weeks and checked it out and decided to make that move. And it was, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. Great, great opportunity to help, help people there. Well, tell us about how you founded the Emergency Medical Association of Turkey. Well, three, hour, three years after I arrived there, the government created the new specialty of emergency medicine, and I started training my own doctors. Before that, I was just teaching medical students in the emergency department. But training my own doctors, they were excited about the new specialty and wanted to have a, an association that supported emergency medicine and creating standards and uh, standardizing equipment, standardizing training, and so forth. So myself and some of the other doctors involved in other hospitals around the country who were also interested in that decided to form the Emergency Medicine Association of Turkey. And it happened and the, the generation behind me uh, who's continued that work, they're doing amazing work and congresses and conferences and training all over the country. They're doing a great job. Fantastic. Now, in 1999, a devastating earthquake struck Turkey, and your team was able to assist with rescue efforts. How did that event impact you? You know, that was just a horrible, horrible event. Um, I was not present at the time, but I went there several days later and helped with some of the rescue efforts. And one of my proudest moments, actually, was uh, in the area of the earthquake was most intense. Some of the hospital buildings had fallen down, but one of them was intact. And I went there one day with another team of uh, rescue people. And lo and behold, in the emergency department was one of the doctors that I had trained. Several years, she had finished her training a couple years before, and she was in charge of the emergency department that day. And that was just such, a, such an amazing, uh, proud moment for me. I bet. I can only imagine. Horrible, horrible event, though. Just horrible for so many families, thousands of people. Yeah. Now, John, you moved back to the States in 2017. Was there a particular reason uh, you moved back to the U.S.? You know, I think my my work and training and teaching in Turkey had, I had finished the job, so to speak, uh, finished the task, I think. The younger generation was doing well. And we wanted to spend more time with aging parents and with our children and grandchildren I started to appear. And so in uh, 2017, we made the move back to the States. And one of the doctors that I had trained with in Cincinnati was in charge of the emergency departments up here in Cleveland with the Cleveland Clinic. And so we moved to Cleveland. One of our uh, children was here. One of our kids was here with their husband. And we decided to move to Cleveland and settle here for the next few years, at least. And you're still in medicine in Cleveland to this day, right? Still in medicine. Worked my uh, nine-hour shift yesterday in the emergency department. So it's uh, there's there's never a dull moment, believe me. And your son is also in that same department, is that right? That's right. One of our boys is an emergency medicine physician as well. And some of our shifts overlap, and we sit next to each other, and... Uh, see patients and so forth. It's it's pretty fun. That's cool. Now let's turn back towards rugby a little bit. Uh, of all your rugby memories, is there one that stands above the rest? You know, I think, you know, playing, uh, there's not just one, I guess. I mean, it's just a great, being a part of the rugby family is a great thing. Being at UCLA with Dennis Storr, was always an adventure, always you never know what to expect from him. Uh, that was a great time and being with the players at Santa Monica. It was a very interesting trip going with the Cougars to South Africa. 
And in fact, we won our best, the biggest upset, really. The game, one of the games, the one game that we won was at against Northern Transvaal, which apparently was their best provincial team at the time. So having this American team come over and beat their best provincial team, that was a great upset. Uh, so that was that was an interesting, that was a great experience. But and playing in Hong Kong, of course, there's 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 hardly anything that can beat that, really. Yep, I agree with that. Now, you may have answered the question here, John, but of all your tours, Eagles or otherwise, which one stands out and why? Um, well, I only went on the three tours, two with UCLA and then one with the Cougars. And I guess the Cougar tour would have to be the most interesting and, you know, excellent players on our team, uh, interesting place to visit. And and winning, beating Northern Transvaal, the big upset there. Uh, playing against the Gazelles, kind of the junior Springrock team, uh, that was an amazing game as well. But we we had a wonderful experiences everywhere. And looking back on your rugby career, what are you most proud of? You know, I think playing with just wonderful teammates who value hard work and who value teamwork. It really is a family, a family affair. And that's one of the great things about about rugby as a sport. It's not just the, the individual doing a great job, which I played with many, many great uh, athletes, but it's the camaraderie and uh, hard teamwork, hard work uh, to get the job done. And that's just been a great part of my life. And John, looking at your medical career, what are you most proud of? You know, I think uh, our time in Turkey was was so interesting, starting the first emergency medicine residency program, starting the first paramedic training program in the country, and seeing the younger generation uh, latch on to things and promote emergency medicine and training in the whole area, actually. They've had European conferences for emergency medicine, Eurasian conferences. So the younger generation has done super done a super job and one final question john what does being selected as this year's recipient of the u.s rugby hall of fame chairman's award mean to you you know i'm just glad to be in the rugby family the usa rugby family and being with uh, amazing teammates uh, great athletes and being a part of that camaraderie is a is a wonderful honor so i thank you much for that well, John, well-deserved, and uh, it's great catching up with you, buddy, and uh, congratulations once again. I look, and look forward to congratulate you in person in Salt Lake City. Thanks much. It'll be great to see you in person again. That's right. Well, folks, that's going to do it for this edition of our With You Rugby podcast. Stay tuned for more as we get closer to our 2023 U.S. Rugby Hall of Fame induction ceremony, which will take place in Salt Lake City on September 16th. If you want more information, go to our homepage at usrugbyhalloffame.org. Until next time, stay safe, everyone.